Hello world, it's Dr. Donovan Cross. Hello and welcome back to another episode of An Alien Reads the Bible. If you didn't watch the last episode, I recommend going back and watching that one. Because you'll hear how we said in this one, there's going to be a shocker. Some crazy weird verses you never expected to find in the Bible. That's right, here we go. Next time someone asks you what your favorite memory verse is, you can tell them the one about the members of donkeys. What you say? Members? Like donkeys? Yep, that's right. Ezekiel 2320. For the first reading of this scripture, I thought it would be good to use the Geneva version of the Bible. The Geneva version came out before the King James Version. You know, that again, like the one of the concentrations on this video is to think about how we got from the the Dead Sea Scrolls or the tablets that they were chiseling out the Bible onto, or the scrolls that they were carefully, painstakingly writing every word of the Bible onto, um, to this beautiful book you see before you. The King James Version Bible, the New American Standard, all of these versions of the Bible, the New King James Version Bible, the Living, Living Translation, all of these things came from thousands of years ago to here. So we're reading to, cause from this one, from the Gen Geneva Version, Feel free to read it from whatever version you want. I'm curious to see how it translates in other versions, but it's pretty interesting in this one. Here we go. For she doted upon their servants whose members are as the members of asses and whose issues is like the issues of horses. <laughs> Can I get an amen? Can I get a praise Jesus? Join me for a round of Our God is an Awesome God. They didn't teach that one in Sunday school. Can you imagine a song? Please turn with me in your hymnals to page 69 and sing with me. Here it is in the King James Version. There she lusted after her lovers, whose genitals were like those of donkeys, and emissions was like that of a horse. Now I think I know why the Bible is a number one bestseller. It's got a lot of competition for Fifty Shades of Grey. Let's read on a little bit here. Let's read the surrounding scriptures from this in the King James Version. As soon as she saw them, she lusted after them, and sent messengers to them in Chaldea. Then the Babylonians came to her, came to her, to the bed of love, and in their lust they defiled her. And she had been defiled by them. She turned away from them in disgust. When she carried on her prostitution openly and then and exposed her naked body, I turned away from her in disgust, just as I had turned away from her sister. Yet she became more and more promiscuous as she recalled the days of her youth, when she was a prostitute in Egypt. There she lusted after her lovers whose genitals were like those of donkeys and whose emissions were like those of a horse. So. You longed for the lewdness of your youth when in Egypt your bosom was caressed, your young breast fondled. Look out, Fifty Shades of Grey. Here comes the Holy Bible. In my readings of the Old Testament, it seems there's a lot of discussion about whoring and sex. Seems like the authors were quite obsessed with such, especially Ezekiel. Here's another fine example. Ezekiel 16.7 Thou hast taken thy fair jewels of my gold, and of my silver, which I have given thee, and manifested to thyself images of men, and didst commit whoredom with them. So this might be the first case of a dildo, or even maybe a full-on sex doll. <laughs> Let's go on. Here's another interesting one. Deuteronomy 23 in the King James Version. This is the first scripture in Deuteronomy 23. He that is wounded in the stones, or hath his privy member cut off, shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. <laughs> well, I guess you got to draw the line somewhere. If you uh, got your penis cut off, or if your balls got crushed, or something like that, you ain't coming to church. Isn't there a bunch of scriptures in the Bible about circumcision? <laughs> I don't know what the Bible has with genital mutilation anyways, but there's 20 scriptures about circumcision. I guess there's a fine... There's a thin uh, gray line about cutting off the tip of your privy, or the whole thing. And I thought anybody was allowed in church. I guess 
Cutting off your penis is one of those unforgivable sins. Let's go on. See who else isn't allowed in church. A bastard shall not enter the congregation of the Lord. Even into his tenth generation shall he not enter the congregation of the Lord. Wow, seems like the Bible places a lot of judgment on us for things not in our control. I mean, how can you be responsible for something your great-grandpa ten generations back? And we go on. An Amorite or a Moabite shall not enter the congregation of the Lord, even under their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. It says forever. Have any of you ever chased back your genes to see if maybe you were an Amorite or a Moabite? Because if you have, you're not allowed in church. Forever is forever. Let's go on. Because they meant not with they meant you not with bread and with water in the way when ye came out of forth of Egypt, and because the hired against the balm of son of Beor or Pethor or Mesopotamia of, to curse thee. Nevertheless, the Lord thy God would not hearken unto Balaam, but the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing unto thee, because the Lord thy God loved thee. Oh yes, God of love. Speaking of love, how about Leviticus 26? And ye shall eat the flesh of your sons, and the flesh of your daughters shall ye eat. Wait a minute, what? And ye shall eat the flesh of your sons, and the flesh of your daughters shall ye eat. Wow, that's just straight up cannibalism. That's all there to that. If you read the rest of that chapter, God's just raining down destruction on curses on that city. Uh, no love in that one. These are Old Testament, you say. It seems to be a lot of popular saying that the Old Testament doesn't matter or something. I don't get it. it seems to be just another example of only reading the scriptures you want, like the kid on the playground who keeps making up his own rules. If you're going to continue, if you're going to say you read the Bible, read the whole Bible, read the Old Testament, read the New Testament, it all has the same amount of meanings. And besides, let me read, let me um, read to you a New Testament scripture that says, it's Hebrews uh, 13.8, says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Well, the Old Testament must have been yesterday and now we got today and the same forever. So, you're uh, forever saying you shall eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters. Let's go on. and let's, Now, these are New Testament scriptures, by the way. So here's a New Testament scripture. I've got a few more after this one, but we're going right here. Luke 19, 27. But those mine enemies, which would not that I shall reign over them, bring them hither and slay them before me. And I have this Old Testament, uh, kind of this King James Version, I'm sorry, not Old Testament, this King James Version, Old English reading can kind of be hard to understand sometimes. So let me read it again, and since I'm not reading from a newer translation, since I'm not reading from a newer translation, I'm going to go ahead and paraphrase for you a little bit, but go ahead and feel free to read it from whatever translation you have. Like I said, this is about reading your whole Bible, about knowing everything, what it says. But those mine enemies. So it's saying, my enemies, which would not that I shall reign over them. So it's saying, people that would rather I didn't reign over them. And uh, I'm curious to see who's talking here. Um, I should have read on. I think it, I don't remember if it's actually Jesus or if it's just, but it's in the, from the New Testament. So anyways, who would not that I should reign over them, bring them hither. So bring them to me and slay them before me. Bring them to me and kill them before me. Lots of love there in the New Testament, by the way. Whatever happened to thou shalt not kill. Let's read some more scriptures that I find interesting in the New Testament. Ladies, this one's for you. 1 Corinthians 14, 34. Let your women keep silent in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience as also said the law number 35 and if they will learn anything let them ask their husbands at home for it is the same for women to speak for it is a shame for women to speak in the church how about you make that one out of a bumper sticker post that one over the door of your church and see how many women come into your church 
let's go on. Luke 14, 26. This one was Jesus talking, by the way. If any man come unto me and hate not his father and his mother and wife and children and brethren and sister, yea, and his own life, also he cannot be my disciple. That seems pretty family oriented right there. Hate, and it lists them off individually father, mother, wife, children, brethren, sisters. I thought the Bible is about love. Well, that's it for today, folks. That's uh, another episode of An Alien Reads the Bible. I'll be bringing out another one soon. Hope to see your likes, subscribes, and comments below. Thank you. Have a nice day.